Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here this evening. Um, I'm hoping you can see me. Can someone give me a thumbs up or confirm in the chat if you're able to see me and hear me okay? Thank you. Um, my name is Jenna Meyer and I work at the University of Pittsburgh in the Department of Housing. Um, and I want to welcome everyone here this evening um, to our first Prep for Pit Zoom session. Um, and I want to thank some of my colleagues who are in the chat this evening supporting me. So um, the way that this will work is um, I'm going to present a short PowerPoint presentation to give some brief information um, for incoming first year students. Um, and then we will open it up for Q&A. But if you have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to drop it in the chat where my colleagues will be answering some of the messages there. Um, just keep an eye out because they will be adding your name um, with the answer if we can link something for you. But hopefully I can answer a lot of the questions here this evening um, that can help the greater good. Um, and we can get started here in a minute. So let me just pull up my PowerPoint. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and make this. All right, here we go. So like I said, welcome to our first PIT first year housing Zoom, um, where I hope a lot of your answers will be a lot of your questions will be answered tonight um, and that you learn a little bit more about um, what's expected of you in the upcoming months and what we can offer you um, as an incoming first year student. So a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be chatting about this evening. I'm going to go over what guaranteed housing means, um, the welcome letter and deadlines that are coming up, um, a brief building overview, um, another a, a short overview of what meal plans we have to offer, um, some resources that are available, and then we will open it up for Q&A. Okay, so I think one of our most common questions is what is guaranteed housing? Um, so as a perspective, or how do you get guaranteed housing? So perspective, first year students who are admitted through admissions and financial aid for the fall term. So that should be anyone that is on this Zoom um, and pay their, their $300 enrollment fee by May 1st, which is the admissions deadline but then also pay their $325 housing deposit by their designated due date or guaranteed housing for on-campus housing. So um, if you've already paid your enrollment fee and you've already received your housing information, you should have had a designated um, due date for your housing application and deposit. And if you pay your deposit by that date, then you are guaranteed on-campus housing. And in order to retain that guarantee for the three years, you have to follow the deadlines for guaranteed housing for the next two years. So we will be in touch um, in the fall term for what the expectations are to retain your guarantee at, for, as, a, as a rising sophomore and then also as a rising junior. But as long as you pay your deposit and get everything in by your designated dates, then you are guaranteed on campus housing. So those dates that I was um, referring to, um, so if you have already paid your admissions deposit um, and you've already gotten your first email from Panther Central with this information, um, it should have had a designated deadline in that email. And as of right now, everyone's deadline is May 1st. So whether you deposited in March um, or February or even in November, um, if you deposited then, everyone's deadline at this point is May 1st, we will start pushing those deadlines back, I believe this week. So then our next deadline will be May 8th, but you must stick to your deadline that is in the email that you receive from Panther Central. So um, as of right now, everyone's deadline is May 1st. Um, that's also the deadline for you to submit your photo for your Panther ID card. So this is something that is required. Um, your Panther ID card will be your gateway to campus. So it's going to get you in and out of your residence hall. It's going to have your meal plan loaded on it. It's how you'll take the bus. It's how you'll swipe in and out of buildings. Um, so you want to make sure that 
um, you submit your Panther ID photo um, by your deadline as well so that we can make sure to have your Panther ID printed and prepped and ready to mail to you this summer prior to your arrival. Um, because what you don't want to happen is for you to show up in August for arrival and not to have your Panther card and then have to stand and wait in line to have one printed. Um, that will delay your move in um, a little bit throughout the day and we'd rather that be very smooth for you that day. Um, two other deadlines that we did add to this form were the roommate request and the living learning community request. So both of these um, are due by June 1st. So this is for everyone. So no matter if your housing application is due May 1st, you can update your application as many times as you want after that point. Um, but we just need to make sure that your roommate request and your living learning community request is in by June 1st of 2022. So um, as long as you have that signed contract, you can go in um, as many times as you want and update it with building preferences and meal plan preferences and roommate preferences. But that is all due by June 1st, because after that point, you can't make any edits to your housing application. Okay, so this is a brief overview of our of our first year buildings that we offer. Um, and it's a really great grid to show you how big the halls are, what kind of room types there are, um, you know, if it's a community or a private bath, um, you know, if there's air conditioning, things like that. Um, so I'm not gonna go through this um, in depth, but I will say to take a look at it, um, it is on our website. Um, because this is what you should be using to preference your building preferences on your housing application. So since housing assigns first year students, we rely on your preferences more than anything to make sure that we wanna put you somewhere where you wanna live. So um, if your preference is to live in a single, then you would wanna put the singles down that are, off that are offered here. So we have Tower C, Lothrop, Holland is in there as well. Um, if you're interested in doubles with a roommate, you have plenty of options on here. Towers is really popular, Nordenburg, um, Sutherland, places like that. Um, so just keep an eye out. You wanna use this to update your application with your building preferences. Okay, so next, um, how do I hide this? Okay. Meal plan options. So as an incoming first year student, you do have a certain number of meal plans that you are able to choose from. Um, and we do get some questions about, you know, what is a meal plan? How do I use my meal plan? What's included in my meal plan? And the way that it works is um, one of our most popular meal plans is the unlimited plus 300 dining dollars. So that means that you have unlimited swipes to go in and out of our all you care to eat facilities on campus, which is right now the eatery and the perch. So unlimited means that you can go once per hour every 24 hours. So you can essentially go in every hour that the dining hall is open that single day. Um, if you wanna grab a banana, a sandwich, you wanna go back for lunch, you wanna go back for dinner, as many times as you want in a single day. Um, and then dining dollars are used to supplement our other on-campus um, dining facilities um, like True Burger, um, Wicked Pie, we have a taco place, we have Chick-fil-A, you can use dining dollars at those places. Um, and we have off-campus and on-campus dining dollars. So we have specific off-campus retailers where you can use dining dollars at, but we also have our on-campus um, dining facilities that you can use dining dollars at as well. And then something else that we have with each meal plan are um, meal exchanges. So most of these get one meal exchange per day, which means that you essentially use one of those unlimited access swipes at one of our on-campus dining facilities for a meal option. So our on-campus dining facilities have designated meals that you can use one swipe for. So you don't have to use any dining dollars for those. So let's say that at True Burger, you wanna get the veggie burger with fries and a drink, and you just have to use one swipe. It doesn't cost you any additional dining dollars and you get one of those per day. So more um, information about our dining options and dining facilities on campus can be found at pc.pit.edu and you can just click on dining 
um, and there's tons of information there. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I'm actually gonna be going into our first year housing portal to show you how to update your preferences, but this is exactly what it looks like. Um, you'll go here through my pit, you'll pay your deposit and it'll bring you to this page. And this is where you'll complete your housing application and then update your preferences. And then if you indicate interest in an LLC, it's also where you will apply for your LLC. Um, so I will actually show you how to navigate this page. So I'm gonna to skip to the next slide. Um, these are some of our resources available. We have the pc.pit.edu website. Um, we have tons of information about housing, the application process, upcoming Zooms, building information, rates, um, deadlines, all through Panther Central's website. So you can click on that there. And then you can also contact Panther Central at any time. Right now they're open 24 seven. You can contact them by chat, phone, or um, walk-in. So if you're on a tour on campus, you happen to be visiting Pittsburgh this summer, feel free to stop in. And then we do have more upcoming Zoom sessions um, where you can sign up for if you have any additional questions that you wanna throw out there. Okay, and then one last thing on our PowerPoint is um, you should download the MyPit app. So this is basically um, mypit.edu in app form. So you can sign up for notifications for deadlines and things like that. Um, it's also where you can access a lot of our information without going through your web browser. So if you download the app, um, it's a really great resource to help you in your next four years at Pitt. Okay, so from here, I'm actually gonna open up that portal that I was talking about before. So this is, um, can you confirm, can someone confirm that you can see this portal right now? Okay, hang on one second, let me stop my share. And reshare my screen. Okay, are you able to see this now? Okay, great. So this is what the guaranteed first year portal looks like. And I, as an incoming first year student, have already completed my housing application. So I have already clicked this here and filled everything out. So once I fill that out and sign the contract, I should never have to click that button again, because I can now go through update my preferences to update any of my preferences that were in my housing application. So if I indicated in 12 month or I indicated as 12 month options that I wasn't interested, but I may be interested now, I can always go back in and update that to yes. I can change my LLC request here. Um, and then I, you know, this is where I can add building preferences if I found any more that I was interested in, or I can delete some that I might not be interested in anymore. So maybe my first preference is Nordenburg, but then maybe I really just want a single. So I'm gonna go into here and um, put Tower C single here. I can also update my roommate matching preferences. So I can answer any of those questions. Um, and then this is also where um, I can update my roommate group request. So this is something that's really important because um, we want to know if you have someone that you're interested in living with because we do prioritize keeping roommates together. So um, say I have a friend that I know from high school that might be coming here and we decided that we wanna to live together. All that I have to do is come into this update preferences portion. I'm going to create a group which makes me the leader and then I'm going to invite my friend to the group to be a part of my group. So I'm going to invite um, my friend Holly. And there's Holly there. So now you can see that Holly is invited to my group. So now Holly just has to go into her update preferences and click accept. So whenever she goes into hers, um, instead of remove here, it'll say accept or decline, and she can accept to be a member of my group or she can de decline my invitation. So if she wants to be my roommate, she'll click accept. Um, and then say, you know, the two of us decide that we wanna live together, but then we meet a group of two other students that we wanna live with, um, maybe through 
Facebook or something like that, or you know, an admitted students day, um, and they want to invite us to their group, you can only be a part of one group. So that means that I would have to go in here and remove Holly from my group and then leave my group. And then those students, whoever the leader is of that group can invite me to theirs. So, um, and if by chance, they can still invite me to their group, but instead of it saying um, leave, like here, it would say accept or decline, but you wouldn't be able to accept or decline because I'd have to leave one group to join the other. So if by chance we do end up like auditing these roommate requests, so if something comes up um, where we see like a red flag, um, we would reach out to you to say like, we see that you may have not accepted an invitation. And um, we also send reminders out to students who have not accepted their roommate invitation. Um, after the May 1st deadline, we start um, sending those reminders out because June 1st is the hard deadline for roommates. So we send reminders out to students who haven't been, um, who haven't accepted the invitation or declined the invitation. And we also send a reminder out to the leader saying you might have a pending roommate request. Um, you should follow up with that friend to make sure that they want to live with you or not. Um, so yeah, that's basically everything in the update preferences portal. But keep in mind that say I want to apply for an LLC, I need to indicate interest in one of these LLCs in order for me to actually go through with the LLC application. So let's see, I let's say I want to apply for Pit Business. I'll click Pit Business there. And then let's see if I can at the bottom here, I'll click finish. My preferences are updated. And then from there. I go in to apply for the LLC and it'll take me right to that pit business LLC and I can actually start completing my application. So it will make me sign an LLC contract and everything like that. Um, and then if you do not want to end up applying for the LLC and you've already completed, you will have to contact Panther Central to have your application withdrawn so that we can notify the LLC that you're no longer interested in living in the LLC. But um, So that's the, the portal. Um, and keep in mind, like if you've already completed, we will be sending out um, reminders for you couldn't see my screen. Hang on one second. I'll share again. Okay, now are you able to see the update preferences? Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Um, Zoom is very weird. It only lets you pick like certain things whenever you're sharing, but um, okay. So I clicked that updated preferences portion of the portal and this is what opened for me. So this is what I was talking about before where I can update anything that was already in my application. So I can, update my um, interest in 12 month housing. I can add more building preferences here. Um, let's say I want a Holland Hall single. I can add that. This is where I'm updating my roommate matching preferences. And then that roommate group requests. This is where I was talking about um, where I create the group. So I'm gonna act as the leader. I'm gonna invite my friend, Holly. There's Holly, I select Holly, and now Holly has to go in and then accept or decline my invitation. So I'm so sorry that you weren't able to see the preferences before, but um, and then since I indicated interest in pit business, Um, I'm going to
let's see, since I indicated interest in pit business, um, underneath that preferences tab or button, there was something that says apply for an LLC. And from there, it will take me right into the LLC application, but you have to indicate interest in the actual LLC. So, okay. So from here, I'm gonna now go through some Q and A. Um, so let's see. Okay, so someone had asked, what does the 12 month housing um, information mean? So that means if you are someone who is coming to Pitt and you might need to stay over winter break and summer break um, for any reason, whether that be classes, internship, travel, um, you should click that you are interested in 12 month housing because whenever we put out the winter housing um, application in the fall term, we will reach out to you saying, you indicated interest, are you still interested in living on campus? Um, and we do designate specific buildings that have 12 month housing. So you may need to relocate for those weeks that winter housing um, takes place with. Um, and then you'll move back into your residence hall for the spring term. So we may need to relocate you, but we do guarantee that we will have 12 month housing available. Okay. So some of the questions that had come in through Q&A, um, one of them was, are there buffet style dining halls on campus? So um, our all you care to eat facilities, um, which are the eatery and the perch, have some buffet options, but it's mostly um, staff serving you. So um, you are able to like make your own sandwich and make a salad, it's like a salad bar, but we have designated stations within those um, eateries where there's like a theme. So there's like a pizza, a pasta, a stir fry. Um, and one of my colleagues at Ateo just dropped it in the chat, the link to dine on campus where you can actually see all the stations that would be in those all you care to eat options or all you care to eat facilities. So there's like vegan options, um, dietary restrictions, um, your typical grill options, you know, things like that. There's a soup, there, there are soups and all kinds of things, desserts. Um, so some of the options are buffet style, but some of them are staff serving you. Um, are dining dollars only needed if you want some food in addition to your one slice per day? So you are not just getting one, a oh, one swap per day. So the meal exchange. So dining dollars, I would say are actually pretty popular for students because of all of our really great other dining options other than the eatery and the perch. So um, you do get a meal exchange, like I said, which I think you're talking about as the swap, but a lot of students might just wanna stop in the Shake Smart um, which is in the peat to grab a smoothie and you're gonna need to use dining dollars there. Um, so dining dollars are really popular because a lot of students do like that flexibility of just like dropping into the market and picking up like a bag of chips or a granola bar or something and that's what you would use there. How long after we submit our housing application can we fill out a roommate form? Um, so you can access your roommate preferences or roommate group information all the way up until June 1st at 11.59 p.m. So if you completed your application in March or April, you have essentially two months to keep updating those preferences. So if you are someone who is thinking about adding a specific roommate, you can update it at that point, or you can go random and all you would need to do is update those preferences and we would match you with someone else who has similar preferences as you. Um, 
If you don't have a preference for the type of room you live in, do you have to put a room preference with your building preference? Yes, you must put a room type preference with the building as well. So we ask for at least three preferences and up to five, um, just because we do try to at least put you in the building, even if it's not within the type of preference that you, uh, room preference that you had put down. Um, the room sync link should be get it should be sent out this week. So we actually had really good feedback last year um, from our incoming first year students that we had opened the link up really early, but there wasn't a very large pool of students who had completed the application at that time. So there really wasn't um, there weren't a lot of options for roommates to match. So we waited a little bit longer to. Um, send the link out so that there's a larger pool of students that would be using the app at one time. Um, if we completed all of the housing information, how do I confirm that it has been received? So as, as long as you get that email saying that you, like, you clicked finish at the end of the application and you got the email that says, thank you for completing, that's how we know it's complete. So as long as you have that confirmation email, then it's complete. If you have a random roommate, when do you find out who they are? Um, so the reason we have that June 1st deadline is because all of June is when we are working on assignments so that we are able to get assignments hopefully out to everyone mid-July. So at that point is when you find out where you're living, if you got accepted into an LLC and who you're living with. Does the student need to decide if the dining dollars are used or the meal swap, et cetera, or does the system handle how the meal plan swipes and dollars are used? So um, if you're going to, if you have not used your meal exchange for the day yet and you're going to True Burger to get that burger meal I was talking about, you would just say like, I want to use my meal exchange and they would swipe it like that. Um, otherwise, if you've already used it, they would probably say you don't have one left for the day and that's when you would have to use dining dollars. And we do offer the option to add additional dining dollars throughout the semester. So we generally wait about a month into the semester to give you the option to add. Um, and in the fall term, if you add additional dining dollars and you have unused dining dollars, we generally roll those over to the spring term as long as you have the same dining plan or something higher. Um, so you are able to use those rolled over dining dollars. However, if you decide to cancel your, your meal plan for the spring or you know, um, for any particular reason you wanna downgrade, we would not be um, rolling over those dining dollars for you. Um, and dining dollars are only good for that academic year. So at the end of the spring term, they would expire. Um, they would not be rolled over to the next year. Let's see here. Yes, room sync information should be sent out this week. So um, if you've already completed your housing application, that is when you would get room sync information, but if you have not completed yet, you would not get that room sync link because it's only for students who've completed their housing application. And that's how you would find a random roommate. Um, let's see here. So I, I do wanna talk about LLCs and roommates and how we assign. Um, so, Let's see here. Okay, so first things first, um, applying for an LLC. So there are tons of options for LLCs to apply for. Um, and I definitely recommend checking out the LLC website for descriptions and everything like that. And we will be having an LLC specific um, Zoom the first week of May where we will have LLC partners there to answer questions. Um, but the way that it works is if you apply for an LLC, but you also have a roommate request, um, and let's say the ideal world is that roommate also applied for the LLC. Um, and the LLC accepts both of you. That means that we would 
try to place both of you together in the LLC because we want you to live with your desired roommate. If you apply for an LLC and your roommate did not apply for that LLC, but let's say that LLC has space to take on more students, um, there's a question on the application that asks you to preference um, LLC or roommate. And if you'd say that you want to, um, you know, if you, if you preference your roommate, we will pull your roommate in if there's space um, so that two of you can live together in your LLC because that's your priority. However, if you apply for an LLC and your roommate does not apply for the LLC and there is no space um, for your roommate to be pulled in, that is also where we will use that information to decide if you want to be separated from your roommate or if you wanna be um, let go out of the LLC to live with your roommate. So you will, if you, this, if you decide that your roommate request is more important, we will release you from that LLC and we will try to place you with your roommate somewhere else. Um, if your number one priority is the LLC, then we will separate you from your roommate to be in the LLC. So whenever someone contacts us saying I was separated from my roommate or for some specific reason, we like to be able to give that um, kind of information as to why you may have been separated. So um, did your roommate not accept their invitation? Did um, they not apply for the LLC? Did you preference something over a roommate request? But the way that I like to assign first year students is um, obviously there are a lot of preferences that we have to keep in mind whenever we assign students, but, and it's impossible to put everyone in their number one choice because there are over 4,000 incoming first year students and only a certain number of spaces within each residence hall. So we like to um, it, we like to make sure that we try to keep roommates together because we would rather put two people that want to live together and maybe one of their bottom preferences um, rather than separating students into keeping them into their first choice because um, it's all about that experience. So, it is a lot of um, efforts to try to make sure that everyone is happy, whether that's with their roommate or in their building preference or in the single that they wanted. Um, it is a lot to consider, but we really try to make sure that everyone is gonna be happy in the assignment that they get. I think I have a couple more questions that have come in. Um, whenever you complete the housing application, it is going to ask you to pick a meal plan. Um, and that meal plan is assigned to you whenever we do our room assignments, but you do have the opportunity to change that meal plan. So if you think that, um, you know, we give you, we give you some time to feel out the meal plan that you chose. So if you choose the um, weekday unlimited with 300 dining dollars, thinking that maybe you're local and you're going to go home every weekend. So there's no reason for you to um, have that unlimited plan. But then, um, you know, in the first couple of weeks, you decide to join a club or you find a friend group that likes to stay here on the weekends. And you're like, you know what, forget that. Like, I think I'm going to be here most of the time. And you want to upgrade. Um, you do have all the way until ad drop to up um, update your meal plan. So you can update your meal plan. It will update for both terms, um, but then maybe your schedule completely changed for the spring term. You do have the opportunity to then change your meal plan later in the fall term for the spring term. So it's the same thing. You would then have the opportunity to change it all the way up till add drop in the spring term to change your spring meal plan. Um, as a parent, can we add money through an app? So the way that um, additional dining dollars works is the student actually goes into a portal just like what you had seen before with first years. And there will be a button that says add additional dining dollars and they will do a drop down as, the, as to what amount they're looking to have. And then we load it on the back end and bill it and it's just billed through pit pay. So it's not like a one-time thing that you can just go on and add. Um, but you are able to add um, Panther funds through my pit um, as a designated, um, an authorized user. So if your student adds you as an authorized user to pay bills or add funds to their account, you can do that through my pit and Panther funds, which are completely different than dining dollars. I apologize that there are like two different fund options, but 
Panther funds are something that can be added that are basically in lieu of like the regular dollar. So those can be used to do laundry. Those can be used to buy something at the bookstore. Those can be used to eat out at some of our um, off-campus dining facilities um, like Panera and places like that. Those kinds of dining options are on our website as a authorized Panther Fund um, business. And I think like there are even places like the Giant Eagle, which is a supermarket or grocery store in Shadyside that takes Panther funds. I think Target takes Panther funds. So those funds are basically like, oh man, I left my debit card in my room. Oh, good thing I have my ID card on me. I can pay with that. Um, so someone asked where a specific LLC is and we actually don't disclose where LLCs are. Um, except for a few that are on our website that have not really changed, but um, some of the smaller LLCs, we don't list their location because it do it sometimes does depend on the amount of applications um, and the demand. So we may need to relocate. So that's why we don't really disclose where some of the smaller LLCs are. Um, something else that actually was not asked, but I think is a pretty popular question is, um, <clears throat> pardon me. Has to do with the Honors College. Um, so we do have students that get accepted into the Honors College and then automatically assume that they get to live in Honors Housing. But the reality is if you get accepted into the Honors College, you still have to apply to live in the Honors Living Learning Community. Um, and they do prioritize honors college students, but it's not guaranteed because they only have a certain amount of bed spaces. So if you are someone who was accepted in the honors college and you plan on living in Sutherland Hall, you still need to apply for the honors LLC. So we will be sending out more LLC information and application reminders, but that is something that is a really popular question that we generally get or actually a really big misunderstanding is, oh, I was accepted into the Honors College and I automatically assumed I'd be living in Sutherland when in reality they have to complete that supplemental application and be accepted into the community because they only have a certain amount of spaces. Um, I do see a question here about move-in and um, I don't have a lot of information about what move-in will look like this year. Um, I can say that it will happen in August, and I'm assuming that we would like to, to go back to as normal as possible. And generally, the way that um, arrival works is you have a designated day that you're supposed to arrive, and we ask you to stick to that day. Um, and then you move in, you have a designated like parking area for the building that you should be moving into. Um, you move in and then it's generally pretty seamless where you get your stuff up to your room and then you unpack. And then for the rest of the day, it's, oh, let's run a Target and get some things that we might need. Let's go grab lunch, things like that. And then the student is pretty actively involved in floor meetings and orientation things. And move-in dates have not been um, announced yet. So those are still being decided. Let's see. Any more questions? Um, okay, so there are some questions about parking passes and parking leases. Um, I will say that like parking is very limited in Oakland. And if you have any parking questions, um, we'll drop the link in the chat for the parking and transportation office. You should give them a call. Um, I believe there may be a wait list um, available for students um, who are anticipating bringing a car to campus. But basically um, we encourage you to use your bus pass as much as possible. We understand that there are some circumstances that you might need um, a leased spot for um, your student, but um, it is very hard to get good parking and or parking on campus in general. Um, another question, do all residence halls come with microwaves and refrigerators? Um, 
they do not. So I would definitely take a look at that grid that I had up previously or our individual residence hall pages that are linked onto pc.pit.edu. Each of those pages indicates if the hall comes with um, a refrigerator and a microwave. But I will say that if you are assigned to a hall or you preference a hall that does not, um, we do send out information closer to arrival um, to rent those items. So the company um, will send out the information. They're generally a third party, but um, you would rent through them and then they would deliver your micro fridge to your room prior to you arriving and then they pick it up at the end of the year. So you don't have to worry about moving it in or anything. It's just here whenever you get here. Okay. So I think those are actually, and you can definitely bring your own refrigerator and microwave. Our specifications um, are on our website um, for size and things like that, but it's generally like any small micro fridge or refrigerator, it can have a small freezer on top and then a regular size microwave, nothing um, too large. So again, I wanna thank everyone um, for being here this evening. Um, feel free to sign up for future sessions. Um, you, will, you will see the same PowerPoint, um, but you may find out that there are other questions that are out there and you can always go back to these videos. They will be posted to our website um, and always rely on our website for information. Please feel free to reach out to Panther Central. If they are not able to answer one of your questions, I work directly with them. They will send you to me and I can help out as much as I can. Um, so please make sure you're sticking to the deadlines and the emails that we're sending out. Make sure you're checking your PIT email. Um, we are so excited to have you on campus. And if you need anything else, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. But thank you again and have a great evening.